as many dogs benched as last year. Refreshments are being served at the marquee at the west end of the grounds. The fun's ready in ring number two. Next event, number 729. Tallies bred by exhibitors. Have your dogs ready. Quiet, please, during the judging. Attention, please. Judging in ring one. Event number 728. Scottish Terriers, American bred dogs. Great Danes in ring number two. Great Scott in ring number one. This is number 292, Captain McCavish, shown by the owner, tail, the well-known fancier, Mr. Tail. Milo Vance, whose kennel comprises some of the finest campaigners in America. That's fine, Mr. Milo. Milo, Up to your right. Cup of That's great. Right. Sorry, boys, but these are not trophies. <laughs> oh, that's fine. Right. Hold it right there. Thank you, thank you so much. And if we go now, I can stand one dog, but this bedlam is getting on my nerves. Don't be impatient, darling. We'll have plenty of time for dinner. Huh? Hold it, darling. Two and a half. So... Event number 728. The blue ribbon won by Gillespie of Heatherstone. Dundee Deviler is runner-up, and Midlothian Gentleman receives the special. Better luck next time, Mr. Vance. Don't be downhearted, Captain. You're still champion with me. Maybe we'll have better luck in Italy, huh? Tough luck, Vance. I was hoping to have the pleasure of meeting you tomorrow. Oh, thank you very much, Mr. Cole. Perhaps you'll get stiffer competition from Sir Thomas MacDonald. Perhaps. We'll borrow Missy Morn for a second. But, Miss Ray, you know, Mr. Hart, you don't want to aim at your body's dog. Come along and protect him, if you like. That's enough, Sir Thomas. I wouldn't take off another whiskey. Mm hmm. I think you're right, Sandy. Get ready. Hold it. Thanks. Hey, uh, Gilly Laddie. <coughs> Hello, Hilda. Hello, Tom. Well, what's the idea? I thought we do a little private judging. I don't imagine your uncle particularly approve of this. I'm sure he wouldn't, Tom. <laughs> Hold him in a minute, Sandy. Let's take a good look at him. All right. Come on, I'll see. Well, get to you. Mm -hmm. Well, what do you think? I think it's a pretty close thing. But I'm not worried. Hey, Sandy? I think you're better safe, sir. Here we are, sir. What the devil do you think you're doing, Hilda? Why? Well, how do you do? How do you do, sir? I just wanted to prove that you're going to lose money to Tom when these two get into the ring tomorrow. And have you proved it to your satisfaction? So much so that I want you to loan me a thousand dollars to place on Gilly. Hilda, that's a cheek for you. Wants to bet against me with a thousand dollars of my own money. I wasn't asking you for your money. 
I merely want you to loan me some of mine. As long as I control the purse strings, you're not going to do any betting against me. You'll be grateful that I've saved a few thousands of your fortune someday. But don't raise your hopes too high, Hilda. Bring that dog out here. I shouldn't let him worry you, my dear. You knew how I hate him, Tom. Things he's done to me. I despise him. Darling. Now, let's see. Where did I put that? Ah. Here it is. Unsolved murders. <laughs> you know, I almost forgot it. I wouldn't have been able to sleep a wing tonight, wondering who murdered who and why. How any intelligent man can read that dribble is beyond me, Brisbane. What time does that Chicago train go? Five o'clock. Well, it's 4.15. Oh, you've got plenty of time. Yes, I know, but I want to get out of here before uh, Archie gets home. <laughs> Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Is my brother at home? Yes, sir. He's upstairs. Tell him I want to see him. Yes, sir. Your taxi's waiting, sir. All right. There's a the bag. Did you uh, get those reservations? Yes, sir. And uh, Mr. Archer told me to tell you he wants to see you, sir. Oh, he did, eh? You tell him I don't want to see him. Tell him I said so. In those words, sir? Exactly. Unless you can think of something stronger. Yes, sir. Of course. Of course, it's none of my business, Brisbane. But I wouldn't talk that way in front of Gamble. I don't trust him. I just couldn't resist it. <laughs> I'd like to see the look on Archer's face when he tells him. I wouldn't. How the deuce can you stand it here? Why, there wouldn't be enough money in the world to compensate me for being Archer Coe's secretary. Oh, he's not as bad as all that. Hey, you better be getting along. There's such a thing as carrying loyalty too far. Don't forget. I overheard a few of his choice remarks to you when you dared suggest that you were in love with Hilda and wanted to marry her. I'm afraid you're taking Archer a little too seriously, old man. Did you deliver my message? I thought it best to wait till you were safely away, sir. <laughs> Do you mind dropping me off? I have an engagement with Hilda for dinner. Come ahead. Come ahead. All aboard. All the express. Stanford, Bridgeport, New London, New Haven, Westbridge, Harlem, Boston. Here is the Thomas McDonald News. What's the matter, Something terrible has happened, sir. Gilly's gone. What? And I cannot find him. They have taken him off the bench, sir. Well, he couldn't have got loose. He didn't break that lock himself, either. I haven't been away from that dog for ten minutes all day, sir. I just went into the restaurant to get a wee sandwich, and when I come back, he was gone. Sir Thomas? Yes? I think we found him, sir. Where? Out in the alley, sir. <gasps> This way, sir. Gilly. He's dead. Oh. I'll kill the man who did this. Listen, Tom, you mustn't do anything until you're sure, please. I've got my own ideas. Oh, I know Uncle Archer's mean and cruel, but I can't believe he'd do a thing like this. But Mr. Archer Coe isn't here. Your dog dead. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. I'll try to locate him at once. Go away from me, you. Get out of here. Get out. I suspected it when I saw you together this afternoon. You're nothing but a two-timing... Get out of my apartment. Get out. From now on, it is your apartment. All yours. I'm getting out for good. Ah, Mr. Crow. My dear friend, I... Yes, I see you are. Perdone? Yes. 
Oh, I am, how do you say it? Punctual Legory. I came to see you. I received a cable from Milan authorizing me to complete the deal for your Chinese collection and confirming the price of $117,000. Means decorations and all that sort of thing from a very grateful government, I suppose. Oh, un momento. But it's no good now, of course. I've changed my mind. Oh, but you have promised me. You can't go back on your word. What would I tell my people? What would I say? You pity you didn't think of this before. You might have been a little more discreet, eh, Grassy? Did you have signed a contract with Too me. Too bad for you. It's still at my home, in my safe. Oh, but you will. Most certainly destroy it. Tonight. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll give you Miss Delafield for nothing. Again, eh? I was led to believe that the cook's place is in the kitchen. The next time I shall... I have been expecting my dismissal, Mr. Cole. We have served our purpose, these priceless treasures and I. I overheard Mr. Reed saying you were preparing to sell this whole collection. You've been listening at the keyhole, have you? You cannot sell them, Mr. Cole. Do you think I would have dishonored my ancestors, perjured my soul, cheated my own countrymen to acquire these for you? Had I not believed that you would reverence them as I do? That's the worst of your race, a pack of mawkish sentimentalists about your ancestors. I don't need you tonight. Go on, get out. I would suggest you consider most carefully before you sell. 